Hey folks, thank you for joining us today for morning prayer. Thank you for joining me for this reflection. Today we're preaching from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus at this point, he, um, he goes to Peter's house, to Simon's house, and there he finds Peter's uh, mother-in-law sick and dying. And so he heals her. And it says she instantly jumps up and begins serving them. And, and while I'm certain there's a sermon to be had in that as well, what I really want to talk about is something that happens towards the end of this passage. What it says is, Jesus got up early one day and he went off to pray by himself. And while he was gone, everybody else woke up and they began looking for him frantically. And when Jesus shows back up at the house, so Peter tells him, he's like, everybody was looking for you, where'd you go? And Jesus responds, let's get everybody together and go into the villages. We've got work to do. I don't know if you've ever read the article. Um, I'll, if I can find a copy of it online, I'll include it in the description. But the name of the article is called The, the Tyranny of the Urgent. And in the article, the author talks about how um, when we feel like we are being pulled along by all the urgent matters in our life, it can become incredibly stressful. And it can take us away from the true mission of our life. He says that just because something feels urgent doesn't mean that it's actually important. It doesn't mean that it, that it should take precedence. And, just be, and, and likewise, things that are important don't necessarily feel urgent. But they don't lose their importance because you don't feel like you have to do it right away. Now, I know in my own life, there's, there's a few things that I think are important for my ministry and for, for myself that I really want to engage in. I, I've got a, a book, I've got a few books that I really want to write that I've got them all figured out, but they're not urgent. And so they just sort of sit there and I take care of all the urgent things that I have to do. Meanwhile, those very important tasks of, of fulfilling that dream, they go on unfinished, untouched. But doing the urgent things also don't make me feel like I'm achieving anything because there's always something else to do. There's always another urgent task to take care of. There's always something else that's more pressing than these important matters. When we find ourselves living in this place where we are trying to satisfy the urgent and not taking care of the important, we may not feel like we're actually living the life that God has intended for us, that we're, we're caught up. We're caught up in something that we're not meant to be a part of. We're caught up in something that's not bringing us closer to our goals, not bringing us closer to the person we're supposed to be, not bringing us closer to the purpose we're supposed to serve. In this story, Jesus knows what's most important. He goes and he prays. And even though everybody's freaking out, when he comes back and they're you know, asking him questions and wondering what's going on, he doesn't give in to the urgency that they're projecting onto him. He goes about doing the next important thing, which is to go to work in the villages that surround the house, to go to work in the communities that he's supposed to serve. It's really important that we recognize when the urgent has seized control. It's important for us to recognize when we get caught up with that feeling that if we don't do these things right now today, life will cease. We will cease to exist. The world will come to an end. Nothing will ever be the same. We will ruin what we have. Whatever else those, whatever, and whatever other feelings we have in those moments. It's really important for us to recognize when the urgent has become the master, has hijacked our lives, so that we can begin the process of taking it back. Just because it's urgent doesn't mean it's actually important. Our lives should be about doing the important things. 
Our lives should be about doing the things that matter most, the things that will have the most impact. Our lives should be about doing the next thing. Even when that next thing doesn't seem like it's terribly urgent. Jesus understands this. Jesus understands that his ministry was not there to satisfy the urgent needs of the people around him. It was to satisfy, it was to do the important things of his ministry. If he had gotten caught, if, if he had gotten caught up in doing the urgent, he may never have left Peter's house. There always would have been another person to be healed. There always would have been another person to take care of. There always would have been more and more and more urgent, pressing needs pushing in on him from the people around him. He would have not had those opportunities to share the messages that he needed to share with the world that he needed to share it with. He wouldn't have had those encounters that he needed to have in order to pass along the message that he was wanting to pass along to the rest of the world. He wouldn't have had the opportunities to teach his disciples, his followers, how to be Christ-like in the world. He wouldn't have had that opportunity to lead them in ministry where they could learn from him if all he ever did was take care of the urgent matters. Because sometimes, if you look at Jesus' ministry, it wasn't just a matter of taking care of the next sick person. Sometimes it was about sitting around the campfire, laughing and telling stories with his friends. It's important for somebody to be healed, but it was also important for him to develop his disciples. There is a balance for us to strike. There's a balance for us to strike between the urgent and the important. But the urgent should never, ever, ever be allowed to be the primary driver. Urgency is just not capable of, of running your life. Urgency is not capable of offering you the guidance that we all need to move through life. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you and may you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that, that you and I will figure out that balance and that we will learn to distinguish between the urgent and the important. And that we will learn to discern when the urgent has seized control of the wheel. Amen.